why do you need 8-bit quantization for large language models? So quantization, particularly 8-bit quantization, is a vital technique in optimizing large language models for several reasons. First one is reduced memory footprint. LLMS, due to their enormous size, have a significant memory requirement using 32-bit floating point numbers, that is, FP32 for weights and activations can be very resource intensive. By quantizing these values to a 8 bit integers, that is int 8, the memory requirement is reduced by approximately a factor of 4. This reduction is crucial for deploying models on memory constraint devices or environment. Then the next reason is improved computational efficiency. The use of 8-bit integers allows for more efficient computation compared to a 32-bit floating-point operation. Modern hardware, uh, including the CPUs and GPUs, often has specialized instructions that can perform multiple 8-bit integer operations in parallel, significantly speeding up the computation. And the third reason also is quantization error training. Because it's important uh, to note that uh, simply converting a 32-bit trend model to a 8-bit can lead to loss of accuracy. Therefore, quantization error training is often employed. This technique involves uh, training or fine-tuning the model with the knowledge that it will be quantized, allowing the model to adapt to the lower precision and minimize accuracy loss. And there is mainly two quantization technique, a symmetric one with absolute maximum, uh, also called abs max quantization, and an asymmetric one with zero point quantization. In both the cases, the goal is to map an FP32 tensor to an int 8 tensor. And now this is that landmark paper, 8-bit optimizers via blockwise quantization, where uh, this quantization concept was initially proposed and this is the library bits and bytes that you'll be using a thousand times if not millions if you are dealing with training a large language model or fine-tuning a large language model. Uh, let's quickly go through these uh, individual parameters here of the bits and bytes config. So the first one load in 4-bit. Uh, this parameter is for loading the model in 4-bits precision. This means that the weights and activations of the model are represented using 4-bits instead of the usual 32-bits. This can significantly reduce the memory footprint of the model. 4-bit precision models can use up to 16x less memory than full precision models and can be up to 2x faster than full precision models. However, if you need the highest possible accuracy, then you may want to use the full precision models. And uh, the next one is uh, BNB 4-bit use double quant equal to true. This parameter enables double quantization or also called nested quantization, which applies a second quantization after the initial one. It saves an additional 0.4 bits per parameter. And then the next one is BN, this one, BNB 4-bit quantype equal to NF4. This parameter specifies a type of 4-bit quantization to be used. In this case, NF4 refers to normalized float 4, which is the default quantization type. And the last one, BNB 4-bit compute D type equal to torch.float16. So this parameter determines a compute data type used during the computation. It specifies the use of the bfloat16 data type for faster training. The compute type can be chosen from options like float16, bfloat16, float32, etc. This configuration is needed because while 4-bit bits and bytes stores weights in 4 bits, the computation still happens in 16 or 32 bit and here any combination can be chosen by the user that is by the developer and uh, the options are float 16 b float 16 and float 32 and here i've chosen float 16 and uh, the matrix multiplication and training will be much faster if one uses a 16 bit compute d type and the basic question you may ask is, does floating point 4-bit precision quantization needs any special hardware or has it any hardware requirement? 
Note that uh, this method is only compatible with GPUs, hence it is not possible to quantize models in 4-bit on a CPU, that's the only requirement. And among the GPUs, there should not be any hardware requirements about this method, therefore any GPU could be used to run 4-bit quantization as long as you have CUDA version equal to 11.2 or more installed. And keep also in mind that the computation is not done in 4-bit. The weights and activations are compressed to that format and the computation is still kept in the desired or native D-type. And after quantization, one of the most uh, impactful concept or technique that was introduced is PEFT, that is parameter efficient fine-tuning using low rank adaptation which is one of the great innovation in large language model space. So with uh, PEFT, uh, we only fine tune a small number of extra model parameters while freezing most parameters of the pre-trained model, thereby greatly decreasing the computational and storage cost. This also overcomes the issues of catastrophic forgetting, a behavior observed during the full fine tuning of large language models. Further, PEFT also uh, shown to be better than fine-tuning in the low data regimes and generalized better to out-of-domain scenarios. So PEFT is a method basically that employs various techniques including LoRa, that is low rank adaptation, to efficiently fine-tune large language models. And LoRa adds a tiny amount of trainable parameters, that is adapters, for each layer of the large language model and freezes all the original parameters. For fine tuning, we only have to update the adapter weights, which significantly reduces the memory footprint. This approach helps prevent catastrophic forgetting, a situation where models forget what they were originally trained on during the fine tuning process. So let's quickly go through the various parameters of LoRa config. I have hyperparameter is R. So R represents a rank of the low rank matrices learned during the fine tuning process. As this value is increased, the number of parameters needed to be updated during the low rank adaptation also increases. So intuitively, a lower R value may lead to a quicker, less computationally intensive training process, but may affect the quality of the model thus produced. However, increasing R beyond a certain value may not yield any discernible increase in the quality of the model output. And the next one is LoRa alpha. So this parameter is used for scaling. So according to the LoRa uh, research paper, the original one, the updated weight delta W is scaled by alpha divided by R, where alpha is a constant. When optimizing with Adam, Tuning alpha is roughly the same as tuning the learning rate if the initialization was scaled appropriately. The reason is that uh, the number of parameters increases linearly with R and as you increase the R value, the values of the entries in delta W that is weight updates also scale linearly with R and we want delta W to scale consistently with the pre-trained weights no matter what the R value is used. That's why the author set these alpha parameter to the first R and do not tune it. The default of alpha value is 8 and then I have these dropout uh, rate. So uh, this is the probability that each neuron's output is set to 0 during training used uh, to prevent overfitting. So dropout is a general technique in deep learning to reduce overfitting by randomly selecting neurons to ignore with a dropout probability during the training. The contribution of those selected neurons to the activation of downstream neurons is temporarily removed on the forward pass and any weight update are not applied to the neurons on the backward pass. The default value of LoRa dropout is zero. And then I have this bias parameter which can take any of the values between uh, none, all and LoRa only. If all or LoRa only is used, the corresponding biases will be updated during the training and the default value is none. And lastly, I have this task type. So 
uh, th this is generally just represent the type of task that the model is uh, being fine tuned for that is all so possible task type include causal lm feature extraction a question answer sequence to sequence lm sequence classification and token classification and to understand why we need to identify those target layers we need to first have a quick overview of the mechanism of the low rank adapters so a neural network contains many dense layers which perform matrix multiplication the weight matrices in these layers typically have full rank meaning that a matrix does not have any linearly dependent or redundant rows or columns in contrast to full rank low rank means that the matrix has redundant rows or columns however when adapting to a specific task the authors of the lura paper shows that the pre-trained language models have a low intrinsic dimension a low intrinsic dimension means that the data can be effectively represented or approximated by a lower dimensional space while retaining most of its essential information or structure in other words this means that we can decompose the new weight matrix for the adapted task into lower dimensional matrices without losing too much important information so the lora paper authors hypothesize, hypothesize that the updates to the weights also have a low intrinsic rank during adaptation this means that they can be decomposed into the product of two smaller matrices which significantly reduces the number of parameters required to represent the original matrix lora focuses on approximating these weight matrices by their low rank counterparts thus reducing the model size and computational cost now lora adopts the rank of the low rank approximation on a per layer basis this is based on the observation that the different layers in a transformer may have different optimal ranks by choosing the rank for each layer individually lora allows for a more efficient trade off between model size computational cost and performance and the intuition behind these uh, choosing the optimal layer is that that uh, different layers in a transformer model may have different optimal ranks for the so first the target layers for applying lora are identified these are usually the layers that contribute the most to the model size and computational cost such as the query and value projection matrices in the multi head self attention mechanism this is due to the matrix multiplication operations required for their computation and the subsequent operation in the attention mechanism and for each target layer a low rank approximation is computed with methods such as singular value decomposition or svd or other matrix factorization technique the objective is to find two smaller matrices whose product closely approximates the original weight matrix in the target layer 